Good afternoon, everyone. Jason here. Today is March 12th, and this is your aftermarket update. All right, we had a really handsome day here at the Oil Trading Group. In fact, we had a single CL trade that went 100 ticks per lot times two lots today. Uh, that is the trade that we're going to be talking about here, and that's the one that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, however, uh, in the for the sake of pure transparency, we had a couple of things that went against this. Uh, we had a couple of losing trades here this morning as we were trying to get short on the CL. Uh, also had a losing trade on the ES. A couple of losing trades on the ES. Then I had a nice two-point winner. And then uh, I got shaken out of two trades. One that would have been an 11-point target. And then if you move it down just a little bit more, it would have been a seven-point target. But both of those trades that ultimately did get to our targets on the ES uh, ended up uh, shaking me out beforehand. So again, we had a couple of trades that lost early this morning, a couple of trades that break even, then I had a, I had a, a, a decent ES winner. Um, that, that Again, these are all trades that kind of preceded this trade of the day that I want to show you here. Uh, again, the CL trade of the day is the one that I really want to focus in on because, again, what I really want you to understand uh, when I make this video, one of the things that's important for you to understand is that if you can hang on to your bigger targets, and we give you the tools to be able to provide you with these targeting areas, if you could figure out how to hang on to these uh, bigger targets, then you end up with a really uh, good trade. But not only that, it ends up uh, wiping away any losses that maybe uh, you had on the day or maybe even the day before. And so that's kind of what we did in here today. So let's take a look at some of these bigger picture charts. Let's kind of analyze uh, what our thought process was going into it. We do this analysis here every morning prior to getting into the session. And so one of the things that we've been talking about here quite a bit is that you do have uh, this four-hour chart where you have this series of higher lows and higher highs that culminated in a triple top and a double bottom. And now you've been consolidating here uh, in this symmetrical triangle. So one of the things that we've talked about about this symmetrical triangle is that it does have the, uh, it's about a 56, 44 percent break to the top versus break to the bottom. And so there's the preponderance here or the slight edge, if you will, goes uh, for a long breakout. That would be in line here uh, with this series of higher highs and higher lows. We have not broken a structure point here, so for the most part, this still is a higher high. However, this is the 200 period uh, SMA. And so on this 200 period SMA, this is the pr uh, moving average that uh, a lot of technicians like to look at, uh, indicating that price trading above the SMA would be bullish and price trading below would be bearish. And so again, as you look at this four hour chart here, uh, we did bounce here off of this trend line, right? If you connect this area here uh, like this, this was a trend line. And then uh, we did come down here on Friday. I rallied actually quite a bit on Friday. Couldn't quite get to the 200 period SMA. And so what we were looking for here is kind of a mixed bag. We were talking about on this higher time frame how you had some, you could make a case for the, uh, for the bullish market and you could certainly make a case for the bearish market. But as long as we were staying below this 200 period SMA today, uh, we were initially looking at shorts this morning. If you take a look here at this 30-minute uh, chart, uh, again, we had this inverted cup and handle that we were looking at, or sorry, not inverted, but this cup and handle that we were looking at. And we said that if the market was going to reach out, and we measured this from the top of the handle down to the bottom of the cup, at least at this point, it was a uh, kind of a immature formation. It wasn't quite matured yet. Uh, we were talking about that in order for that to kind of be confirmed, we would need to be breaking out above this trend line. Once we got here and confirmed that we couldn't, uh, we began to look here again short at 61.70, right in this area here. That's right where the trend line on this cup and handle was. Uh, that was one reason we were looking for that area. Another reason we were looking at that area is if you take a look here at the three-minute chart as we got started here this morning, right? So into the overnight session, uh, that 70 area had played, had quite a bit of support and resistance, right? You spent a lot of time rotating in and around it. You could have brought this down a little bit deeper. Uh, but one of the reasons we picked 70 is there was a lot of liquidity on our uh, liquidity tool, our heat map that we look at uh, right there around that 70. So we kind of picked that area at 70. And of course, you have a nice trend line here uh, coming into the open to the downside on the three minutes. So the four hour charts below the 200 period SMA. We talked about that uh, 30 minute chart banging into that trend line. And uh, we were looking right up here around this 6970 area. And as soon as the market broke what was a triple top, we had had this triple top here at 69. 
and the market kind of rallies up into 80, breaks the trend line, can't get through it. And then you have this big sharp sell off uh, right below. And we look to get in short uh, right around that 80. You had some liquidity here that was following price action down. That, that's what we look at and use this heat map for is you had some of that liquidity. And then also you had one last idea that we were looking at here. Uh, this, These are your volume bars. The bigger and fatter the bars are, the more volume has been traded on those bars. And so as the market is rallying up, you reach this kind of climax point and then you get this bigger, heavier bar uh, that begins this process of selling off. We got below this uh, triple bottom. We saw liquidity starting to follow price action down the chart and we jump on board. We had a 13 tick stop just above this swing high at 80 and we were looking for an initial target today of 19. So let's talk about why we were looking at that initial target of 19. Uh, we'll turn, let's see, let's get rid of this uh, drawing tools here really quickly. Okay, so we were looking initially at 19 as one of our market maker levels. Kind of the way that we, we talk about this is we call it kick the signal, pay the target. And as the market got through this structure signal and could not get above this structure mid, and then we began to have all of those reasons that I just was telling you about why we were looking short initially today. Uh, the market comes in, can't quite get to the level above it. And so you are looking for a move down to this structure target. So either way, we know that it's going to, on most days, it's going to either hit the target on this side or this target up above. But the fact that we could not rally uh, past the structure mid gave me some clues to look to get short. We end up getting short. And you'll hear me say on the video that my target is down here at this structure target at 19. Now, one of the other things that we did is once we got into the trade and we began to spend quite a bit of time, you'll see, you'll notice we come down here, hit the low right down there into the structure target and the market rallies just a little bit. One of the things that we had talked about is that we hit that target relatively early in the session, like around 9.30 a.m. Central Time, that we really could be reaching out to this daily structure extension, one down here at 84. But beyond that, as we got into the session this morning, what we, one of the things that we talked about is that the market could reach out to this 60.65. And so I was in at 60.68 and we said, well, let's do this. We'll put the target, we'll move this target down into this 60.68 area. And that if you wanted to get long down there, that that would be a place that you could do it. If you were really aggressive, if you wanted to get long, uh, that might be a place to look and try to do that. Then of course the market jumps right down here, goes down to 67. We actually covered one tick above the low here today. And then the market has subsequently rallied fairly aggressively. But if you can see here, as the market comes down into your daily structure extension, one comes all the way down to the low down here at 67. My uh, cover was at 68. And of course, the market has subsequently come all the way back up uh, to end the trading session here today, right around, uh, let's see, we're trading at 61.34. So again, really handsome trade today. 100 ticks times two lots on the CL. Uh, it did cover uh, for a couple of the small losses uh, that we had today. And you add that to the one ES winner, and it was a really handsome day here at the Oil Trading Group. So as I always do, this trade lasted uh, This trade lasted well over an hour today. So as I like to do, I'll let you see where it is that we got in. You can hear the entry and see that entry uh, show up here as we called it in the uh, live, in front of the live audience here today. Uh, and then we chopped the uh, trade down into pieces, put a little music behind it. I put some text around it so you can kind of get an idea of what we were looking at at the time. And then uh, that's how we present to you the OTG trade of the day. So again, without further ado, here is that OTG trade of the day. As well, all right, I'm in in both, I'm in uh, on this CL. The stop here on the CL is 81. And the entry is 99.75 on the ES is what I'm looking for. The target on the CL is 19. Oh.